All right, here we go. Yay. Hey, beautiful people. It's 5.01 and I'm SLP and this is Watch Me Work where every time we get together, we work together and then we have conversations about uh, your work and your writing process. We've been doing it for, oh my gosh, uh, over 14 years, maybe 15 years now. We started in the lobby of the public theater and then we moved to the mezzanine level of the public theater. And when COVID came and lockdown came, we moved online to Zoom and we've been supported all this time by the public theater and HowlRound and now the New Work Development Department at the public theater. And Zoe Kim is part of the New Work Development Department. You wanna say hi. And so we're gonna work for 20 minutes and then you're gonna get in touch with me about your creative process. Zoe, tell us how to do it, please. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome on this beautiful Monday. My name is Zoe Kim. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm part of the New Work Development team at The Public. It's such a joy to have you all here on the Zoom. So as SLP said, we will um, have a work session for 20, for 20 minutes. And afterwards, when we open up for questions, um, please do use your raise your hand function on Zoom. And um, then I will ask you to please unmute yourself where you can ask your question and then we'll kind of queue up uh, the questions with the raise your hand function. So um, on that note, it's all yours, SLP. Okay, great, I got my timer. I'm gonna start it. We're gonna work for 20 minutes. Here we go.
All right, we're back from our work time and uh, we will take questions for the rest of the hour. Yes, if you have a question, please use the raise your hand function in your reactions button at the bottom of your screen and I'll call on your name and then and then ask you to unmute. Oh, Nana, um, thank you and please feel free to unmute yourself. Thanks, Zoe and Susan. I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm working on a new play and I'm feeling really stuck. I felt stuck about it and conflicted um, for quite some time. Um, the working title of it is Brad Pitt's My Bitch. And it's about um, his work in post-Katrina Ninth Ward um, and how all these houses he had built ultimately led to the destruction financially and medically of a lot of individuals. And um, so the idea is that these five individuals kidnap Brad Pitt when he's officially acquitted. Um, and they're holding him hostage over one night. And they realize that their desire for revenge is eclipsed by their own personal guilt and culpability. Um, what I'm struggling with a lot is the idea that those who have read it so far have concerns about shades of gray in culpability, um, talking about how victims can play a role um, in their victimization and how the victimizer can bear some innocence and unawareness. And um, I realize the delicacy of that issue. Um, and I just wanted to get your advice. This is the first time I've played outside of my sandbox with something that could be divisive. And I'm, I'm really struggling with feedback I'm getting and then my own fear that I will, I will be disliked. Thank oh, you. That's a great, that's a great uh, question. Sounds like a really cool play. So you said this is the first time you, you, you've been playing outside of your sandbox, but what, what's your main sandbox? Well, I'm a good Asian girl, so I follow all the rules and I write things that are funny and sweet, but that don't offend anyone. Um, and maybe they make you squirm every now and again, but not things that make people gasp and upset the balance. And this is something, having worked in international aid for nine years, and seeing donor-driven versus beneficiary-driven projects, seeing it from all ends, like what people could do differently to achieve optimal success and realizing there's no one that's entirely um, free of blame, even those who are in the field and who are struggling to make a living. So um, that's that's a little bit of my background. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So, um, uh, so the feedback you've been getting are 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 they saying that that i mean everyone bears a responsibility is that what what the general feedback is i think the idea is that how can you hold victims and specifically because this is loosely based on a true thing i mean this really did happen with mm -hmm. ninth ward victims and if this play ever saw the light of day i would change the references to Katrina, the Ninth Ward, obviously I can't use Brad Pitt, um, but the idea that victims can be held um, culpable for anything. It's kind of um, blaming the victim, so to speak, and that's the feedback I've gotten. What I'm trying to do is show that these five individuals over the course of the night have a reckoning of could they have avoided this? You know, did they kind of turn a blind eye because of their adoration of this celebrity? Did they not see the warning signs? And ultimately, you know, in the case of one who is a lumber supplier for the houses that ultimately had asbestos that led to the death of several folks, true story, he knew that they had asbestos, but he was torn between a rock and a hard place. And there were people far above him that knew that they had asbestos and they kept pushing him to supply it. So he feels exonerated until he faces Brad Pitt. So I think a lot of these things are raising issues with people who are reading it, my, my agent included, that are kind of pushing back and be like, yeah, you, let's, you know, let, let's tame this. And I, I kind of don't want to. Right. Who is it for, the play? I think it's mostly for me. I think it's something that I've been wanting to write for a while. And ideally, it would be workshopped and be something that um, is seen. Um, mm -hmm. in whatever form it takes. But I think it was something really honestly for me because I I do feel sometimes that I, I play by the rules and 
Mm -hmm. I I wanted to force myself to just say what I want to say without censoring myself. You say you're stuck. Where are you stuck? I think I'm stuck on, is this conceit compelling enough or is it just, for lack of a better word, sexy? And is it more alienating than it is um, thought-provoking? Mm-hmm. And you're, uh, I'm, 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 I, 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 you've talked, I'm sort of trying to wrap my head around the problem you're having with it. The problem you're having with it is because people are asking you questions about it and you have a hard time writing things that are, make people, well, what are you writing? Uh, yeah, I think part of it has been the wanting to change the conceit, really. So, you know, my reps, um, colleagues who have expressed any concern for those who do, many have not, have said you'll have a greater chance of this seeing the light of day if you change the conceit, which is, is it black and white in terms of being guilty and innocent, or are there shades of gray of culpability? And instead, really focusing on um, is, you know, is revenge the best way to overcome grief? And that's not the question I want to raise, but that's several people much further along in their careers and much more familiar with this industry have suggested that. So that's where I'm feeling stuck because I don't want to do another draft um, with the conceit I currently have. But when I try to work on something that might be more palatable, it just, it doesn't feel like that's the story I want to tell. Yeah, then then don't. No, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I mean, it's it sounds like what you've written if if it ever sees the light of day you're gonna have to change the names of the characters and you're gonna have to do all that um why don't you do a draft where you do that because oh. you want it to see the light of day and if it sees the light of day you're gonna have to change all the names and all the care you know um th then go ahead and do that that's so brilliant i can't believe i didn't think of that that's yeah i i think I'm here to think of the things you, you haven't thought of. I yet. so yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. So that so then you'll be doing a draft. You know, you'll be doing a new draft and you'll have time to you'll have an opportunity to go through and tweak other things. And and maybe, I mean, uh, it, it sounds like both ways into the story are equally interesting. You know, is revenge the best way to grieve and or, or what you that's not what you're writing or um culpability shades of black and white uh, shades of gray or black and white and that's yeah. what you are writing both ways into that situation are interesting i think maybe you just have to make your your story stronger it might be too if the affi it's you know what i mean it's uh, the language around it when you're talking it was kind of hard to follow okay so, so you might just want to focus. Um, I mean, the asbestos guy that sounds uh, definitely changed the, the 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 names and the location and all that. You got to do something else because that would be uh, leading into legal stuff for you. If already you're worried about it, so just be mindful of that for your own self. Um, um, but other than that, I think I think that your way into the story sounds great. Don't I mean don't write the the play that you don't want to write. You know. You know. It's, yeah. It sounds like a cool play. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Graham. Will you please unmute yourself and ask your question? Sure. Um, I recently completed my first play ever, um, mm -hmm. and so. Thank you. And um, the transition from <laughs> an internally driven process of creation and uh, creativity to the soliciting of feedback, query letters, like all that stuff that I wasn't even thinking about when I was writing the play. I'm not loving that process. And I'm just kind of curious, does that get easier? Is it a skill that you can learn? Or is this a sign that I'm not a playwright? <laughs> Ah, that's that's great question, Graham. Congratulations on finishing your play. Congratulations on finishing your first play ever. Um, it's totally a skill that can be learned. Of course, it's a skill that can be learned. It's something that you can, you know, it's it's like uh, 
you know, dating or whatever. Maybe it's, you know, it's awkward, but you get, you get used to it. You know, if you want to go out on dates or whatever, it, it's like anything like riding a bicycle the first time, yeah, but then you're going to get used to it. So I would just say, keep doing it. And if you don't, uh, you're not enjoying it, you know, do it for little, do it for a, like a small period of time during the day and then reward yourself, you know, go out for a walk, meet some friends, go to a movie, go to a bookstore, you know, do something to reward yourself for a difficult job. Well done, you know, and just be like, Hey, this is part of it. It's part of it. It's part yeah. of it. Like, um, like getting notes is part of it. Like, I mean, you, we can think of all the fun things about writing and then all the things that make it difficult and it's all part of it. Some things we're going to enjoy more than others, and um, you'll get you you'll get it'll it'll get easier. I think the more you the more you do it, um, you should, you can also think about like wow I I really like to have my plays at this theater or whatever, and um, make it fun. Just make it fun as a, as enjoyable as you can, you know. Great, um, I love that idea of doing it in small pieces. Thank you. And give yourself some treats for finishing. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Graham. Um, Jay Lists. In a funny way, this may be a little related to the question that, that was just asked. So I'm wondering um, if you could share some secrets of what to do if you have like writer's block. Um, uh -huh. uh -huh. I've been going through some things and I'm really behind on some things I should be doing. And it doesn't feel good, but I haven't been able to get out of that. And so I'm just wondering, you know, then it occurred to me as I was listening that maybe you have some or other people have some suggestions of what I can do to get myself moving and back on the project. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's a great question, Jay. Um, some things. Here's a question I have. What are you doing during the day? Are you reading the newspaper online, reading the news? Are you well, how do you spend your writing time? Do you go to your desk and sit there and just kind of look at the wall? What do you do? Sometimes I do that. I'm not getting much sleep. There's just a lot going on physically and with the family. Just it's just a whole lot. And I know that it has something to do with um, you know, a type of depression. But at the same time, I, I run a film festival. Uh -huh. And I need to be on that case, getting it up and running. But it's just been very difficult. So what I find myself doing is it's taking me longer to get simple things done, such as writing the publicity or uh, approving the poster or making the poster. And I know that there's a better way. And this hasn't happened in the past. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and, and it's something I love doing. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm really, just not as efficient right now as I should be, and so at least I know that I need to get some help. And yes, I need to talk to somebody about it. But I also thought I would just ask and see if you have some or other people have some suggestions of what to do when you just are in that space where you're not. And we can open it up. We can open up. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. We can open up um, and have people add their suggestions. Um. Uh. One thing you could try is to work with the timer. So instead of saying, oh my gosh, I have to write, I have to write 10 pages. You can say, how about I'm going to write for 10 minutes? You know, so you're not talking about writing. You're talking about, you know, organizing some, some uh, posters or things like that. But you can say, I'm going to work for 10 minutes. Not, I have to finish this entire project today. Instead, small up the task. Um, just say, I'm, I'm going to work for 10 minutes today. I like that. Just just work for very small chunks. What they call you know, bite size, bite size mm -hmm. chunks, mm -hmm. you know? Small chunks like that. And imagine that you're crossing a river and you have a stone and then another stone and then another stone. Um do you work uh, collaboratively with other people who are organizing the festival? I do. I'm actually I'm the executive director and it's 18 years old. So that's uh -huh. what I mean. It's this is a bit of a shock. And, right, uh, and it's all volunteer. We don't charge. I'll send you the information to sign up to mm -hmm. watch it. But um, it's just one of those things. So there are a couple of other people who are really working very hard. In addition to just friends, one of them's in on this uh, session today. Mm -hmm. uh, 
that that you know really help out. But the bulk of it, since I'm the executive director, that's on me. Mm-hmm. And then, okay. does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Also, you can be you know practice kindness. It's a it's the holiday season, and a lot of people go, yeah, the holidays are so much fun. The holidays are hard, people. The holidays are really hard. There's a lot of family stuff, and family's great. Yeah, and family's hard. Family's work. Family's a lot of work. Yes, family gives us joy and love and all those good things. And family also gives us sometimes unnecessary drama or just, you know, the media, what's going on in the news. Ah, don't get me started. There's a lot of heavy stuff going on in the world right now. Um, And with all our responsibilities that like Jay, you might have never had a problem getting stuff done, you know? A lot of people I hear are having, they're early birds, but they have trouble now getting up early in the morning or they, they're they night owls and they get their work done at night and they have trouble, you know, staying up late at night or think they just have trouble focusing. A lot of people do. So you can give yourself some loving kindness and know that the work will get done. I'm just going to do a little bit at a time. You can also listen to yourself talk and really emphasize your positive self-talk. The way we talk, I talk about hypnotizing yourself. The words go out of your mouth and into your ears. Oh my gosh. You know, so you can say things like, okay, um, I'm working. I'm working a little bit every day and the work will get done by the time it needs to get done. The work will get done by the time it needs to get done. Okay, you can start those mantras. Um And just be gentle with yourself. Well, I have to say, I'm shaking my head and scribbling as you're saying all these things. I totally agree with you. I do try to give myself breaks and say it's going to happen and then things do happen. You know, so I do tell myself that, but it's just right now, it's just very hard. I had to change the startup date um, for the festival because it was so difficult, but it's going to happen. Uh, of course, one of the big problems is that I'm a community person. So 18 years, I've never charged for this festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's online for a month. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's just a lot of responsibility. And I am not rich. <laughs> you know, it's just trying to put things together to make it happen. I hear you. I hear you. I yeah, hear you. but I, I appreciate what you're mm-hmm. saying. Uh-huh. Like I said, I'm sitting here shaking my head as I'm listening to what you're saying. Yeah, just be as positive in your head as you can be. Um, go for walks outside if you if you like to do that sort of thing. Um, or um, just stand and like, you know, just... Oh, that's try. good because I find myself just sitting at the desk and getting really yeah. stiff. Yeah, stand up and that's I, cool. I, I, just twist around like this. Okay, that's that's a good yeah, just, and, and we're not talking about any, any big, you know, calisthenics, but, but just gently, just twist, do leg lifts, you know, stand and just like march in place. Turn mm-hmm. on some of your favorite music, mm-hmm. dance around. Well, that's what I like to do. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, maybe work for five minutes, and then take a dance break to your favorite song. Mm-hmm then work for five more minutes and you're using the timer this time. And again, it's not the timer on your phone, right? Or you're on your watch, it's the timer, a, a, a pretty basic timer mm-hmm. work for five minutes, then, you know, do some stretches, you know, then work for five minutes and call a friend and talk for an hour or however long you want to talk, work for five minutes. And, and I don't know, watch a little bit of your favorite movie. You know, just do like a little five minute increments. That's good. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Sure. Other people, if you have suggestions, just throw them in the, you can throw them in the chat so we can, so we don't miss people's uh, questions or if nobody has questions and you have a suggestion for Jay, either way. No, Rain, did you have something to say or did you have a next question? I have the next question, but I didn't want to cut it off. No, no, no. Go ahead. Put questions uh, in the chat. That would be great because we don't want to miss anybody. Um, I am working on my thesis right now. It's my last semester of college. Oh, 
Thank you. Um, and I, um, I'm a playwriting major, but so my question, I am was working on my play for the 20 minutes and I'm curious how slash what decisions you all make for yourselves within like what the goals for an iteration are. Like when, when, like obviously in every, well, not obviously, but like you can't get to everything in every production ever, or every iteration of the stage reading, but like, um, what do you decide is your cutoff, I guess? You mean what are, what are my goals for a draft? Um, like when in an iteration of a draft going into like a reading or development or anything like that, like when do you decide to stop going through writing and let it like freeze, I guess? <laughs> well, when's your deadline? <laughs> well, that's the issue, um, kind of, of just like, uh, the space has been said of uh like keep writing until it goes up keep writing but it's getting to a point where it feels like i really shouldn't be because everyone's getting overwhelmed in the room you know so i'm trying to decide like where to put the line between my personal goals for the script and the like developmental room vibes when do you uh when do you have your public oh, offering? november 30th oh november 30th so how many days is that <laughs> Ten. Thank you. Great. I'm, I'm not paying attention. I'm just watching you rain. Great. Oh, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, could you stop writing by the end of day tomorrow? Yeah. Does that feel all right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> writing by the end of the day tomorrow. Okay, and that's your just how you yeah, your collaborators will be happy um, and you'll have made a decision and you'll get as much rewriting and stuff done as you possibly can. And that's cool. And you just know that your stuff that you save for the next time. Yeah, there's stuff right now that you're saving for your next life. Didn't you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah there's stuff like next life I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be an astronaut yeah detective know. detective see right right okay <laughs> so, so are you worried right now that you're not a detective no no and I'm not worried that I'm not on Mars right now I'm not worried about it it's cool I say hey I'll do that you know what I mean see mm -hmm. it's fine it's Thank fine you. you're gonna finish yeah the next draft you'll do the next thing yeah. Yeah. And then the next thing, and then you'll keep working on it until it's done, done, done. And then you'll go on to the next play or the next thing you're writing. And then you return to it 10 years later and you're like, you no, I, I don't, but <laughs> you. No, I like to be done. I like to be like, yay, hooray. I'm doing something new. I don't have time to go back and read stuff and like, oh, now I got to rewrite it. No, I don't have that kind of time. Yeah. No, 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 no. It'll be like as good as it got. Hmm. you know yeah you know right I mean unless there's some glaring error like you know pigeon was misspelled I don't know I misspelled fierce the other day so spheres fierce oh fierce <laughs> yeah that would be a word that I misspelled too but you but we have spell check now so yeah there's nothing to correct <laughs> is there <laughs> anyway but so, so you're gonna you're gonna be done writing end of day tomorrow what's end of day tomorrow for you what time is that um, flight back to Texas. Flight back to Texas. Okay. I guess nine. <laughs> 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. There you go. So you're going to be done writing at 9 p.m. Fingers, hands up. 9 p.m. Hands off the keyboard. Well, I guess now I have to. <laughs> well, sure. Why not? You wanted to. Yeah. And if you don't want to, then extend it. You said your collaborators are getting upset though. Yeah. Not upset, just overwhelmed. Yeah, it's good. Uh, your collaborators, like actors, directors, is that who you're talking about? Yeah, all of the above. Yeah, it's 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 be because of the the field of theater. We need to be attentive to the needs of the people who are going to be doing our work. Yeah. So if they're expressing concern and unrest, and it's they got ten day, you're giving them, you know, ten day. Do they have to be off book? Do they have to learn it? Oh. 
<laughs> no, but still they, well, they just, they, they have a, a need to sort of just be okay. And you can give that to them. Make lots of notes. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate and, oh, it. Oh, mm -hmm. I, and know that you're going to have another chance at it. Yeah. And you'll be a detective also. Very true. That's so great. <laughs> so great. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. And then we'll go to Crystal. Okay. I uh, can keep this quick. Hey, SLP, nice to see everybody. Uh, recently with my co-writer, we finished another draft. We great. have a table reading coming up in a week and a half. There was a nice talk about table reads last session, uh, but uh, I feel like I've been like, you know, had this thing in my face for several weeks now, uh, many weeks now. Um, just curious if you have any thoughts, ideas about how to get the most out of this reading, how to hear it fresh, how to find the potholes and the speed bumps and, you know, how to, how to hear all that. Mm hmm. That's a great question. What a wonderful thing. You're going to have a table read. Um, I would say and you, it's, you, it's been like this. So I would suggest, you know, give it some space. It's like um, like when I record something in a recording studio or most more often my husband, he records stuff and th then they have to go in and they have to listen to the mixes and they have to make determinations about it. Right. Um, the best thing they do is they don't listen to it until they, they record it on one day, then maybe a week later, they go back in and listen to it and make determinations. They don't listen to it over and over and over. So I would say rest, you know, yep. um, just, just be ready. Make sure that the, the script, the pages are in order and all that kind of pagination is good and all those kinds of things, but don't worry about the content and op be open, be ready to listen. Have a good notebook style thing of your choosing, pre preferably something you can actually write on with your hand so you can take notes while- Any people. thoughts about mm -hmm. reading the script while it's being read versus just, you know, separate notebook away from the words? Oh, oh, you mean like you're sitting with the, you're sitting with the script here and then you have a notebook here, like you're looking? Oh, sure. You can, you can look on, you know, sure, sure. I go back and forth about that just because you know i don't know i don't I, part of me doesn't want to be reading what part of me wants to just let it just listen oh, but oh, then, then hey there you go <laughs> no, no no see because again it's about you and what you want not about me and what i would do because there's no what i do is you know you know i like looking at the word I, I, but i do this a lot so i can look at the words and write and talk to my mom on the phone and you know chastise my son for playing basketball too loud you know in the hallway you know but but um One day i'll be able to do all that in my next life so oh, thank <laughs> you go. there you go but but really but have a notebook ready and listen and and take plenty of notes even the things that you say oh, i don't need to note that no write it down anyway and yeah. maybe tell the actors beforehand I'm going to be writing a lot of notes. They're more for me. You know, they're not yep. about your performance. So when I write things down, just know that it's me thinking about the play. You know, tell yeah, them how to good, hit them good. up front. Yeah, yeah, so they don't get nervous. Oh, no, he wrote something down and I said my line. Oh, no. You know, okay. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Charlie, let's go to Crystal and then Jonathan. Hi. <laughs> How are you? How's your shoulder? <laughs> good. It's getting good. Yeah. Okay. I'm up to lifting like 15 pounds, so I'm good. Ah, all right. All right. Um, I had a question. It's a little loaded. I hope it doesn't take too much time. Okay, go ahead. I've been working on um I'm you know, uh the play with the the nurse and the 80 something year old nurse and all of that, and that's coming and it's it's not coming like I want it to, but it's slowly, you mm -hmm. know, revealing itself. Um, I have a um, a want for him. Um, I don't really have a want for the other characters, which is kind of not happening, not coming together. But I say all that to say I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and one of the things that was coming up 
in the play that's coming up in this play that I kind of was like, how do I get away from this? And maybe this may be irresponsible of me as a writer or as a writer of color was that I wanted to write like a story that didn't have anything to do with like race or racism. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like eventually it's gonna go there. Um, and I'm like, do I fight that? Do I, do I take on the, you know, the, the not burden, but the responsibility of trying to teach something in here? Um, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, I feel like I've had this kind of thing, like, you know, Zeph and Violet and um, some of my other plays, a, a lot of my other plays deal with race or they've dealt with like personal, have been inspired by personal, like racial things that have happened to me or my family. And this is kind of, I'm, it's not related to anything that's happened to me personally, but I think about like, you know, one of the characters is a black woman in the hospital. And I think about the women, the number of black women who have been ignored in hospitals and have, you know, died or almost died because of, you know, of it. Of it. And I'm like, is this is this going to change the um, the goal? Well, the goal is to finish it, really. Mm -hmm. If I could get halfway through, that would be great. But <laughs> the goal is to have something complete. Um, but I just I feel like I it's um, I have this like just this internal like crisis like that's just like what as a writer can I just write or as a, Emma, as a writer of color, I have to write about the experiences of this woman. I was a right as am I responsible enough? Am I avoiding? I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Crystal. Um, so just we're going to talk fast. Let's see. So what is um what is your nurse character, eighty year old nurse? What is what is what do they want? Uh, they want to be taken seriously. Okay. What does your, your, you said one of the patients is a black woman. What does she want? Uh, she wants to get out of the hospital. Great. What's her problem? What does she, she, does she have some kind of illness? Yeah. They've discovered that there are issues with like, <laughs> with her feet, but like um, that might be, that might lead to something more serious. Right. Right. So don't have a be about race have it be about her feet just have it be about her feet she got problems with her feet you know what i mean just write like that something if something comes up then it's authentically part of the story if mm. you go in there going okay i'm trying to talk about black people in the hospital and how they face racism and there you go you, that's what you want to write about again like we talked to the first person today don't write the play you don't like uh right um Naya, Naya, is that, is that how you pronounce? I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm mispronouncing your name, but don't write the play you don't want to write, right? Don't mm -hmm. want the, don't write the, don't write the play you don't want to write. So you're gonna just write about her feet and how her feet. I don't know, was she a dancer? Did she used to dance? No. How do you know? I don't. Did you, did you ask her? I did that. <laughs> she could, you know, she could. It was more of a like. Then I was like, oh man, like. Is this going to go into diabetes and that is that going to go into a stereotype? And then is that like, I, I just kind I'm of thinking, thinking, I'm thinking you're thinking too much. I'm sorry. I okay. know you're, I'm, I'm talking to Crystal like this because we've been together in Wash work for many, many years. So a stereotype, I don't know, stereo, when is it, when is it like something that really happens and when is it a stereotype and is it bad to show a black woman in the hospital with diabetes who used to be a really great tap dancer and now shit, her feet are fucked up and that's awful. And she can't dance anymore. And she just wants to get out of the hospital, but you know, I, she's just a, she's a person first. Hmm. Write about her as a person. We're all people first. And then the issue that gets tacked on to our story in order to make us interesting is, you know, okay. So right, just get to know her. It's like you you walk by the bed too fast. You saw, oh, a black person. Okay, so, you know, whoa, that's going to be about, oh, that might be, whoa. 
you didn't even get to know her. You don't even know if she likes to dance or not. Mm. You know what I mean? So mm. get to know, turn to her, look at her. Who is she? You do know what I mean? Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. And do each one of your, each one of your, the people in the hospital, turn to them, look at them. Who are they? Mm -hmm. They're talking. They, they have things to say. You're not paying attention to them. You just want to get done. Well, they want you to listen to them. You, you're saying the problem with the, the sad thing about black people in the hospital, black women in the hospitals, no one listens to them. You're not listening to her. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Jonathan, we got like two minutes. Oh yeah. no, because I gotta go. <laughs> I just want to say thank you. Uh thank you for your advice from last time about figuring out who that is at the door. Because actually what it yes, because actually what it did is it forced it's forced the two it's basically replaced Malcolm X and Red Fox. They used to work in a kitchen in Harlem. Who knew? Um and it's forced them to actually deal with the stuff that they haven't dealt with previously in the play. So that's been really great. And then also I was curious, I know like a week ago or the week before, uh, there's kind of like a round table at the public uh, about playwrights regarding collective organizing and compensation. And I was wondering if that's going to be, if that was recorded or it might be shared. I, I don't know. You gotta look online at the public theater. I, I, I'm, I, I know many things, but not everything. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jonathan. So glad it's. Thank it, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, hey. Okay. Um, watch me work. Tip of the week. A suggestion for your digestion. It's Thanksgiving week, so you know, obviously, it's going to be the attitude of gratitude this week. A lot of times, uh, the most powerful prayer, if you're in the habit of praying. To, to help yourself manifest your work. The, the most, one of the most powerful prayers is to say, thank you for helping me write. Just acknowledging the power of the, uh, the hand of, you know, the spirit in your life. Uh, it does not have to be God or Jesus or anybody, whatever, you know, we're not talking about that. We're talking about uh, the power of the spirit. And if you've ever felt the spirit, when you are doing creative work, you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't, something to look forward to because it's a real thing. It actually is there. So um, attitude of gratitude, that's our watch me work suggestion for your digestion this week. Um, and we're going to have a happy Thanksgiving. Zoe, are we going to be back uh, the following Monday? Yes, we will. See you all on Monday. Okay, see you all on Monday. Happy Thanksgiving. Hey, Carol, it's good to see you. Thank you so much, everyone. See you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.